All right, this is Paris. I am at the Flight Simulator 2024 preview event at the Grand Canyon. Been here all day. I've had a chance to play the game, but more importantly, I sat through an extensive presentation talking about Flight Sim 2024. So I have someone very special here to talk about the game. So can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Seb. I'm a, from a Sobo studio, uh, one of the developers of Flight Sim 2024. I'm from France. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me about the game. Now, we're going to talk about the technical aspects of yes. Flight Simulator 2024. And I think the best way to kick this off, because this has been the question in my head from the moment the game was announced to here we are now actually playing it, why is this a brand new game and not just an extension of Flight Sim 2020? Yeah, you can see, uh, as what we've said in the presentation, right, there was a, we started actually with this uh, explanation, a, a technical architectural change. It's a completely new architecture. Uh, all the data is now in the cloud. Um, it makes it so seamless for users to don't, no, no, no long download anymore, yeah. no installation uh, in the marketplace. When you get some content, you don't have, it just unlocks. So it's a completely new architecture. Um, we have also changed a lot of technology, flight model, the terrain has 4,000 more times more detail, new lighting, so many uh, heavy lifting changes in the technology and in, the, in everything we did, um, that uh, it, it requires to have a completely new uh, software. Yeah, it's, not, it's not something we could have done with incremental changes or so, right. it, it's, it's something where you have to, like some systems are started from scratch uh, and it takes years to, to implement. No, fantastic. And, and that was the biggest question that I had coming in and then sitting through the presentation as you discussed it, it all made sense to me. Because I think one thing that people are really going to be happy about uh, that have played 2020 is the download size has been drastically reduced. And if you can kind of elaborate more on what you are doing with Azure and in the cloud to be able to stream Flight Sim 2024 to players. Yeah, exactly. So the, the issue we had is that uh, with 2020, when we started, it was around, around 100 gigs. Yeah. And if you are someone who installs a lot of stuff, all the word updates, I mean, today it's two terabytes, just the downloadable content yeah. on, on, on the SIM, plus the over two, uh, close to three petabytes of data for the world. Yeah. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so, uh, yeah, it was just going to be a longer and longer install, uh, more and more space on the hard drive. So we had to change something. Uh, and also an important point is that even if you download all this, you will probably never all see all, all this. You download stuff that you will probably not see uh, in, in during the experience. Like, for example, uh, World Update has hundreds of POIs. If you don't visit them all, you will not see them, but you still right. have downloaded. So the technology now, all this content is on the cloud and is downloaded on demand. And so um, every, every content in the sim has LODs, level of details. So it goes from very... From when you see it from very far, it's super cheap to download. It's very fast, and, uh, and when you get closer, it's going to be uh, going up in LODs, better and better and better, up to very close. Then that's when you get the highest LOD. And so by doing this, we only download what uh, the level of detail you currently see, and uh, so it means we never download content uh, uh, that is wasted. Yeah, we only download the content that you actually need. And uh, so there's a cache on the hard drive. You users can say how big they want it. So we, we recommend to make it bigger than in 2020 because it holds more stuff. It's good to have at least, I don't know, if you fly two or three planes, that they are fully in the cache, that's better. You will never stream them again. Um, and so, uh, yeah, with this system, uh, the installation time is, is much, much smaller. Update much, much smaller. We can update content without you having to download anything. It's yeah. just going to be automatically new. And, and overall, the, the amount of download, bandwidth use, internet use, everything is going to go down. And we can make the sim bigger and bigger, while for you, for user, the end user, it goes down in terms of consumption. Again, that's amazing because, you know, I've been playing it since the beginning uh, with Flight Sim 2020. And even with 2020, you made updates, you mm -hmm. know, over the years. But this is such a, an extensive change that you've made to just at the system level to this game that is fantastic. Now, one thing, again, for people that are, are, are watching or listening to this that may not have played Flight, Flight Sim 2020, talk about the digital twin that is the world that, that you created and just how 
extensive that is from a technical standpoint. You literally recreated planet Earth and you can go anywhere you want. In the game. Exactly. The entire planet is there. Um, uh, down to a level of detail now that is four times, 4,000 times more than in 2020. Right. So it's really down to the, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch. It's yeah. super, super accurate. And, uh, and uh, you have rocks, grass, trees, vegetation, biomes, and it's the entire planet. You can go anywhere you want. Um, and the, the new thing about 2024 is that you can not only go anywhere you want, there's a career mode. You can start that anywhere, so uh, wherever you want. I started it in my hometown, uh, Smittle Airport. I start here, it's the same airport, and I can, I can um, do the entire career in that airport if I want. Yeah. Or I can do it somewhere else, right. and 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 that's something which is super super local. There's there's two million plus like it's between two and four million missions. The thing is, they're completely dynamic. Every day has different missions, and so um, 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 the number is enough for any user to do a career where he wants and stay in that area. Um, so it's yeah, it's the entire world is simulated uh, to uh, uh, accuracy and and precision, which which is better and better, and it keeps going. Uh, going up, yeah. So let's talk about level of detail and how that has improved from 2020 because uh, even during the presentation it was talked about the focus when you made 2020 was let's make sure that the sky looks right, the air, because you're in a mm -hmm. plane flying and not so much close to the ground. But you were showing those side-by-side side -side comparisons, and I've even experienced it myself, playing the game of the drastic update that you've made from 2020 to 2024 with the level of detail that you're just doing on the ground. Because now you can, with the activities, you can get out the plane, you can walk around, you can see different things. So kind of talk about that level of detail. Yeah, so um, uh, we went up by a factor of 4,000. Yeah. So um, for example, where in 2020, you have a, a polygon, which is gonna be like the size of this table. Yeah. Now it's gonna go down to, to I mean, yeah, very, very small. Uh, yeah, yeah. One millimeter, I don't know how much that is. That is sixteenth of an inch or something. Yeah. Um, and this is 3D detail, right? So when we have a, when we used to have a rocky surface in 2020, you could land there. It was, it, I mean, the, there was a bit of shake, a bit of noise, mm -hmm. a bit of sound, but it didn't really feel like a rocky surface. You could pretty much land anywhere. Um, and so uh, most airports, like the one where I fly, there's a tarmac runway, there's a grass runway. And the grass runway requires a very specific way of taking off. So, for example, you need to, you need to really pull the elevator a little bit uh, to uh, uh, p p pilots there say, make it lighter, make it lighter. So that basically you, you don't have so much weight on the ground and you don't get all these bumps which slow you down. Mm -hmm. And then you take longer to take off. So, so that was not so much needed in 2020. And now it really is, right? The, the ground is really fully in 3D, the, the wheels shake over it. And uh, if you want to do a, a bush pilot landing, emergency landing anywhere, you, you, normally you're supposed to fly over at least once. So for example, they call it interrupted flights when you have a, let's say you have a, a failure in your plane, um, but you can still fly maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's just there's no airport in reach, right? Uh, so you're not like, land anywhere, who cares? Yeah. No, you still have the choice. So you're gonna choose a field. But what you're supposed to do is fly over once to check, I don't know, is there rocks, is there trees, is there, yeah. or is it flat? And so that's really needed now because we, we really have dead trees, we have rocks. And so you fly over and you may say, oh no, that field is completely, can't land there and pick another one, I don't know. And then, and then maybe that one you fly over and say, okay, this is nice and flat. These kind of things exist now. And that's really important. So um, it's it's an increase of level of detail, which is not just cosmetic, but which actually plays a role in, in, in the simulation. Um, or for helicopters, so helicopters can land a lot, uh, pretty much anywhere. Yeah. But uh, maybe because of the rock, you cannot land flat, and you right. can only, you know, drop one leg, uh, one 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 gear, and then hold it like this. Helicopters do that quite a lot in the mountains or so. That's all possible now. Yeah. So again, this is called Flight Simulator, and the game obviously is, there, there is a hardcore community there that they're buying all the equipment, they're playing this as a true simulator, they are flying these planes as if they were flying a real plane. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you showed in the presentation, um, I'm talking more from a physics standpoint, because you were showing the example of how 
take off of a, of a plane yeah. and take off of a helicopter with the wind physics and everything. Yeah. About yeah. that, can you can you kind of go into detail of that? Yeah. So we now have four systems working yeah. together. So um, um, some of them are completely new. For example, the wake turbulence. Yeah. It's a physically realistic simulation of the air. Um, it it uh, can stay around uh, up to f six minutes. And uh, it's important in many aspects in the fact that if a small plane wants to take off after a large one, you need to wait for that to dissipate. Otherwise, you will feel it and can yeah. even lead to a crash. Uh, I personally encountered it sometimes in flights when you do like when you just do a 360. I, I occasionally run into my own wake turbulence, mm -hmm. and you you feel the bump, and that's something you can you can have now. Um, and it's an important aspect of, uh, of aviation, it's also helicopters. So now every aircraft in the sim, whether it's multiplayer, traffic, they will all have weight turbulence simulated. So you need to really pay attention to, was there a helicopter flying or, yeah, these kind of things are, are just like in real life, very important now. Yeah, that, that is fantastic. Now, again, we're, we're talking technical aspects of the game. But one thing I, I wanted to ask you about was with this game is a combination of procedurally generated things and handcrafted things. And and you talked some about places that you obviously would not have access to using satellite imagery to create some of these things, but also with the airports themselves, they've seen an upgrade as well. So can you kind of go into detail of the, 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 the mix between handcrafted versus procedurally generated when you're recreating these airports and all these other key locations around the world? Um, yeah, so it, there's always a mix between yeah handcrafted, um, procedural, and also data. Yeah. So um, the, w we will try to use the, so the data as accurate as we can get, yeah. and York can detail a lot more uh, if you have an interview with him on uh, all the data will, sources, yeah, all the stuff. <laughs> but on our end, we, we, we use the data as, as accurate as we can, and procedurally we, prod we sort of, uh, you know, we, we bridge the gap, right? When there's missing data, or when it's not as accurate as we need, uh, the, the computer comes in and adds, or AI very often, so we use AI to recognize ground types, for example, mm -hmm. um, whether something is a rock or sand or something, and once it tells us that, we will, we will throw in the sand texture, which is now 3D and super detailed. Um, and for airports, for example, the, 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 there, has, there has been an update. Um, when, for example, whenever we get new satellite data, um, there's a, a, a accuracy issues. Sometimes it can be off by, I don't know, it doesn't need to be much, but it could be this much t shifted. Yeah. But also, you know, all the continents move. Every year, yeah. continent, you know, continental plates, they move by a few inch. And uh, you take a satellite, you make an airport, and you do it again 10 years later. It's going to be off by, depending, but it's going to be off a little bit. So you need to move all the data, all the runways, all the buildings, everything needs to move. And so, yeah, there's a process of uh, updating uh, airports. Um, some some of it is automatic because sometimes you can you can just look at the picture and look at the old picture, and the machine can say, "Hey, everything moved by one foot to the right." So okay, so we can move everything by one foot. And sometimes it's more complex because there's a new runway and something got closed, and the taxiway is transformed. And so yeah, manually we also go in and 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 adjust these things. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! So you know we talked about that. We talked about wind. But weather itself, we obviously know there's dynamic weather in the game, but are we going to see any updates to that? That is, right now, even in 2020, it's pretty much real time, correct? As yes. far as weather goes in the game. Is there going to be any enhancements to that? Yes, so we, we did. I, I think, um, I mean, I, I, I think it's going to be a very useful enhancement. One of the issues with live weather is that it was right now, that's it. Yeah. So, and, and imagine you want to, you missed an event, too late. You, you know, you you gotta be ready for the next hurricane or whatever. Or let's say you always work late. You yeah. come home at nine. You wanna play. You're always gonna fly at night. That's not very cool, right? So now we expanded live weather. Um, basically, the live mode, live uh, way of traffic, everything. That's been expanded to a 24-hour history. So you can come home. You can fly at nine in the evening and and simulate the live time of three o'clock. Or you, let's say you wanna do the three o'clock flight. You wanna do it again. And again, and again, you can always move it back yeah. and re-simulate the past uh, up to 24 hours. So that's a really cool addition uh, to experience live, uh, live weather. And we also did improvements. We have cirrus clouds. We have now um, the, the storms, etc. The clouds will be thicker. They are more realistically. We, basically, the density is, has been adjusted to be closer to reality. Um, and, and also the lighting. 
the lighting has been improved uh, to, to be more realistic uh, in, the, in the sky, so the weather looks closer to reality. Come put a pin on lighting, lightning, lighting, because I want to come back to that. But so with with this basically this twenty four hour cache of of live weather that you have, you you t also talked about the activities and things that you'll be able to do now. Like essentially, you'll be able to take jobs in your career. So even with that, like like you brought up the example, I work late all the time, so I come home at nine o'clock. But I want to be able to do an activity that happens during the day during a certain situation so I will be able to simulate that at any time while yeah. playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of, I mean one of the reasons we added this live weather 24 hours 3 is to make the free flight mm -hmm. and more enjoyable and also for the career mission so that you are able to because some some flights may only happen in the morning and if you can never sim in the morning then you can never have that those kind of missions so that, that's why this slider uh, is required yeah. Ah, excellent. Now going back to lighting. I keep wanting to say lightning but lighting so you talk about ray tracing in, yes. in the game. What are some of those improvements we're going to see in 2024? Yeah, so ray tracing is very important because um, uh, the, 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 the other technique we, which exists is also more traditional lighting. Uh, one of the issues is the, the resolution of shadow maps, and they're always going to be a little bit blurry. And so um, basically, on the, on the, especially on airplane cockpits, there is a lot of little buttons. And these are way too small yeah. for shadow maps. And thanks to ray tracing, now each of these little buttons, every little gap has its shadow accurately lit. Um, it looks very realistic because uh, ray tracing allows to have uh, uh, shadows which are, you know, um, more or less blurry, depending on realistic, you know, the distance of the object that casts the shadow and the shadow, which is how it looks in the real world. Where with shadow maps, it is just always blurry, and so this makes it so more realistic. You can you can really feel the depths. You feel the distance of a button, the size of a button, uh, just because it looks realistic uh, with its shadow. And that, that's something where uh, I, I would say, especially for a flight simulator, having ray tracing in the cockpit is so important. So final question, kind of a two-parter. Um, flight Sim 2020 right now is one of the most visually impressive games on the market. Just it's as far as photorealism, everything. Um, it started off as a PC game. It eventually did come to the Xbox Series X and, and the S, I do believe. Um, but now in 2024, and maybe you're not ready to announce anything, I, I don't know, but I'm going to ask anyways, on the PC side, right now 2020 is doing DLSS 3, correct? I, I think so. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, are there going to be any, any additional improvements on the PC side when it comes to DLSS? Is it going to use 3.5? Um, anything that people might might expect on PC version? So um, I don't know exactly on okay. on when, but what I can say is we have always kept up. Okay. So even on 2020, we've kept up. So whenever new technology comes, sometimes it takes some time to test yeah. it, try it, implement it. But we try to do our best to keep up and as quickly as possible uh, provide uh, the new technology to, to the simmer. So... Um, I can't say exactly when, but I'm sure every time there's something new in rendering, we, we keep up, we take advantage of it, and we implement it. Yeah. Oh, that, that's great to hear. And again, just giving kudos back to the studio, even when 2020 came out, um, it was very resource intensive at oh, first, yeah, yeah. and you improved it over the years to where now it runs fantastic on PC. Now, on the console side, um, we talked about ray tracing, things like that. Can we expect it on, on the Series X when at launch? So on the console, we yeah, we have found a lot of optimization. We're pushing, pushing, because as you see, the sim gets bigger, bigger, yeah. uh, higher resolution, 4,000 time, 4, times more detail. So And it's the same console, right? The console hasn't changed. So yeah. we are just pushing and pushing and pushing optimization so that we can keep up on the console and have a, a, a similar experience than on the PC. And so, yeah, we have found a lot of optimizations. One of the biggest issues is memory. We found ways to get more memory out of the console. Um, and uh, and we found ways to also get a lot more performance out of it. So we're, we're trying to keep up as well on that side. Yeah, that, that is fantastic. Well, and thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me about Flight Sim 2024. Got a chance to play earlier today. It's looking great. It's playing great. I cannot wait until November so everyone gets to experience it. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Yeah, thank you.